Hi, how's it going? It's me, Max, and in this fourth episode of the series on how to build the Flappy Bird game, we're going to learn how we can add the score to the game and how we can add the collision mechanic to the game so that when the bird collides with the ground or the pipes, it dies. Remember that, as always, the other episodes of this series are going to be linked down in the description below, and there's also going to be a link to the source code if you want to go ahead and check that out. So, without further ado, let's jump right in and continue with building the game. Let me go ahead and start off by explaining how we're going to measure the score for our bird in the game. So, let's say that this little blue circle over here is our bird. I'm going to give it the label bird. We're going to be measuring the score based on the position of the bird relative to the bottom pipes. So we're going to be taking the bottom pipes over here as our reference to calculate the score. We're going to be checking if the bird um, has passed the uh, left corner of the bottom pipe. So if it's gotten to this point and passed it, we're going to be setting the enter variable equal to true. Afterwards, when it has entered this um, section under the pipe, it's going to be between these two spots over here. And we're going to then make a check to see if the bird has passed the bottom right corner of the bottom pipe. So once it has, it's going to be somewhere over here. And in that case, we're going to set the exit variable equal to true. And once both the enter and exit variables are equal to true, we're going to set the past variable equal to true. And once the past variable over here has been set to true, in this case, we want to add one to the score. And this process is going to continue for every pipe. So when the bird continues to move to the right hand side, we're again checking the bottom left corner to see if the x coordinate of the bird has passed the x coordinate of this bottom uh, left corner of the bottom pipe. Once it has, we set the variable enter to true. And then when it passes the rightmost point of the bottom pipe, we're setting the variable exit to true. And since we have enter and exit equal to true, we're going to move on to make past true. And in this case, again, we need to add one to the score because past is equal to true. So we're going to add one again. And this process is going to continue on and on for as long as the bird keeps moving to the right hand side. And so this is exactly the logic that we're going to be implementing. So let's jump right in. So now that we know how the scoring system is going to work in our game, let us go ahead and code it out. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new variable called score and set it to zero. Besides that, we're also going to create a font, which is the font we're going to use to display the score on our screen. Within the init method of our bird class, we're going to add a new variable called alive and set it to true. This is going to track whenever our bird dies. Whenever it dies, we're going to set it to false. And when the bird is alive, it's going to be set to true. Then further below in the update function, we're going to make a small change, which is that we only want to animate the bird and have it flap its wings whenever it is alive. So whenever it runs into a pipe, it dies and isn't animated anymore. So let's go ahead and add that in. In the user input, we also want to check whether or not the bird is alive or not, because we only want to track the user input whenever the bird is alive. Because if the bird dies by running into a pipe, we don't want the user to be able to input a jump anymore with the spacebar. Now we're going to get into the details of the scoring mechanic that I explained earlier. First off, over here in the pipe class, we're going to go within the init function and add the pipe type to the attributes that we input. After that, I'm going to introduce the three variables we talked about earlier. So the enter, the exit, and the past variables. And we're going to set all of them equal to false. And below that, we're going to set the pipe type of the object equal 
to the argument that we pass into the method. So now we're going to get to the interesting part, which is the score. First, we're going to reference the global variable score. Then we're going to add an if statement, which is going to check that we are in fact referring to a bottom pipe. Because remember, we're checking the score relative to the bottom pipes and not the top ones. So once we've checked that we are in fact looking at a bottom pipe, we are first going to check if the bird's X position is greater than the top leftmost corner of the bottom pipe. In which case we can set the enter variable to true. Afterwards, we're going to check if the bird's X position is greater than the top rightmost corner of the bottom pipe. And in that case, we want to set the exit variable to true. And finally, if both the enter and the exit variable have been set to true, then we want to set the past variable to true. Besides that, we also want to add one to the score. There are a few more minor changes that I want to make. First, in the main function, we're going to be adding the global score. Then further below, we want to make sure that the score is actually displayed on our screen. So we're going to have the score text and we're going to render it. And of course, we need to blit, or in other words, output it within our canvas. Another small change I want to make, which will become relevant later on when we add the collisions to the game, is that I only want to update the pipes and the ground whenever the bird is alive. Similarly, we're only going to spawn pipes whenever the bird is set to alive. And now the final change we want to make is we want to add the attribute top or bottom to the top and bottom pipes. Because remember, in the score function, we are checking explicitly whether or not we're looking at the bottom pipe. This helps us track the score. So at this stage, if we go ahead and run the game, you can see that the flappy bird is working completely fine. And whenever it passes a pair of pipes, the score increases by one, which is exactly what we want. Now, of course, there's still one thing missing, which is the collision mechanic. So of course, we want the bird to die and fall to the ground whenever it hits a pipe. That's what we're going to do next. So having said that, we're going to create one variable which checks if there has been a collision between the pipes and the bird. And if there has been a collision, then this variable turns to true. Similarly, we're going to have another variable which is going to check if there has been a collision between the bird and the ground. And this is also going to be set to true whenever the bird hits the ground. If either one of these variables is set to true, then we want the bird to not be alive anymore. So we're going to set alive to false. In addition to that, we're also going to say that if the collision ground variable is set to true, then we want to output on our screen an image which says game over. Finally, we're going to allow the player to reset the game by saying that if the user input is the key R, which is short for reset, for example, then we set the score to zero, we run the main method, and we break out of the current loop. So at this stage, if we go ahead and run the game again, you'll see that we have a beautiful working Flappy Bird game. And whenever we run into one of the pipes, the bird dies. In addition to that, we have this beautiful scoring system, which also works. The final thing that we're going to do in the next episode is we're going to add a small menu screen to the game just to make the game look a little bit nicer. If this episode helped you out, then make sure to leave a like and subscribe to this channel to stay updated on the newest videos and see you in the next one.